Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. In a couple minutes, we are going to do a flip through of my completed art journal. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about buying the mixed media pads. Now what I typically buy are Canson mixed media and I typically buy in two sizes, the seven by 10 and the nine by 12. Right there, this one is taken off the coil and those are the size. And both of those are 98 pounds. I find that is a sufficient weight to do everything that I do with modeling paste and collage papers. I don't need to pay anything more for that. Now, what I look for also when I buy them is they often have, both of these have 60 pages in each book, which when I go to bind them, I only put about 30 because as you can see, this has just under 30, but it's already overly thick. So I collect covers. I never throw it out. I've got from sketchbooks or watercolor papers that I've used for something else and I just save these and then I can put 30 pages in one and 30 pages in another. And if you don't have the extra coils or the extra covers, those extra papers can be used to make templates, can be used to make signatures in, you know, a DIY art journal like these ones and I will link to this video. You can fold the papers and use that paper to make whatever size signatures. In this case, I made some six by sixes, some three by sixes, five by sevens, whatever you like. So I use it for that purpose as well. Now here's something to watch out for. Pay attention to how many pages. This one actually is 138 pounds. I didn't pay attention and it is thicker than I need. So I'm paying for the thickness and I only got half the pages. So check those things. The other thing to be aware of is some of the papers say rough. This one doesn't. This one actually has 72 pages. So I got this one, but some of them have the word rough on them. I do not like working them. They were extra thick. They, it just wasn't for me. So you don't want the word rough in my estimation. Check for the number of pages, get bonus if you want, because you can use them in other ways. You can make cards with them, what have you. So let's get on with the flip through. Now, everything in this journal, every page, there is an accompanying video. So if there's something that you see that you like, you can go, once you have that image, and go do a search on my playlist and, and, and in my videos and find them out. They are within the last year video, so you don't have to go past that. So let's just get ready. And I will, with each of the pages, give you a brief summary of maybe the techniques that were used because that, again, might be something that you are interested in. So this one, the flowers here were a napkin that I overpainted and I created a highly textured background. There's modeling paste under there. There's lots of yumminess and texture, just like I love, and I've made a border on here. This one was an old scrapbook page that I recycled. It had some of these um, cherry blossoms on which I duplicated. I built out more to fill my corner and I used a stencil as a border as well as free printables. 
round and round in the circle game. So here I created an interesting colorful background and then I painted out the circles. These are not collaged on, they are painted out. There's texture, paste, all sorts of yumminess here. But I used whatever colors were in the background on these circles, but it didn't totally obliterate any of that background stuff. And then this was a stamped image. This one was parts of a napkin and I've got modeling paste on here. We've got texture. We've got some shimmer for a frozen lake as well as a napkin. And then I painted some. This was a napkin here and again with a beautifully coordinated background. If you're liking the sentiments that you see on my pages, many of these are in the sentiment packs that I sell through Ninny's Napkins. I will put a link to those and you can go and check them out, see what's in each package and maybe find something that inspires you. This is just a fun page. I collaged these chicken and an egg with some collage papers, made the kind of border. The background was an Insta background with a napkin. Not my favorite page, but fun nonetheless. This one, I used the negative painting technique. So I did the whole background and then I did the negative painting to make the Easter eggs pop. And the bunny is a focal image from a napkin. Napkins are wonderful to use for backgrounds, for focal images, for design elements. This vintage loveliness has texture paste or extra thick gesso with your, that I put through a stencil, a very neutral background. And this was a free printable that was black and white and I painted the colors that I wanted. Find joy in the ordinary. This one again, I created the background and I shaded around the circles to give a background to my focal image and a Julie Nutting doll and a, some stamped images. So you're mixing and matching. You've got techniques, printables, stamps. Again, not one of my favorite pages. This was a face that I draw drew. I used some homemade stamps in the background and stencils. Combined a free printable flower. This one, again, I created the background here, but I coordinated with this lips napkin and a magazine picture. Let joy burst forth. This is a napkin. This is a coordinating stencil. A lot of times you can have both. So this is with modeling paste and it's very texturized and this is flat. And then I did the saran wrap technique in the background. Again, this is a napkin that I put on top of a purple and pink background and I matched, I coordinated the colors. I often overpaint on the napkin and that helps you make it your own. This one, again, beautiful background. I believe I used my ink tense blocks to colorize that. If you have ink tense blocks, I do lots of pages with my ink tense blocks, using them as the primary color or otherwise. And then this is a stencil. All the stencils that I use are from the Crafters Workshop and there is a link to their Shopify store in the description box below. The Dragonfly, again. I like playing with different color schemes and bringing it out and here I used my shading to bring out the dragonfly from the background and then I overpainted it a little bit to make it stand out. Just Bloom, a free printable that I, was black and white. I painted over it so it does have some texture. It doesn't look like copy paper. When you overpaint a napkin or a printable, you it looks like it's been hand painted. And again, coordinating the printable with some stenciling. 
Here is a napkin in the background, and then I use some collage papers, kind of doing a quilt block. This lovely, I've combined this, this element are flowers from a napkin. They are smaller scale flowers, but I've layered them up to make the butterfly wing. And there's this is a printable. And then I made a coordinating background, pulling the colors from the napkin. This one has two napkins. This is a very interesting video because I use the center part of a napkin in a way. These are actually a vineyard picture and I used it as a base for my napkin and it gave a very nice effect. And then the, the ladies are a napkin as well. This one, interesting background with texture paste, modeling paste through a stencil. And here I've used the stencil in the background, in the blue, as well as with the modeling paste. Again, a nice vintage one. I built, this is a napkin that I've built up in the hair of this magazine girl, stenciled on her clothing to make it the right the color that I wanted and then pulled the colors from these to the background. This one used some scrapbook paper here. We've got stenciling, we've got modeling paste and stamps. Again, a napkin and when you decoupage the napkins down, you get some wonderful texture and then I overpaint it and I do both. I use my acrylic paints and I use my ink tense blocks. This is a fun page. Cinderella, proof that a pair of shoes can change your life. This was a fun shoe napkin. And so I just, I found that sentiment and used one of my Julie Nutting dolls and pulled the colors out from the napkin and developed a background that coordinated. I'm going to just turn this a little bit and zoom out so that you can see this. Gratitude changes everything. This I put modeling or extra thick gesso through a stencil and then I colorized it with my ink tents blocks building up the thing and then stenciled on top of it and did some doodling. I love how this turned out. This is one that I might do on a canvas and that's what I use my journal pages for. I it's my playbook, and if I find a, co a combination or something that I really end up loving, a background or a whole page, then I duplicate that on a canvas or a wood panel. Let's give them pumpkin to talk about. Beautiful color scheme. That teal just pops against the yellow orange, which I put into the Julie Nutting doll. So here's, this is the napkin, and this is collage papers that I created or I painted a background. Now this one, again, we have a combination. We have a stamped image, the Julie Nutting doll. Her dress is made of napkin and you can see the texture there. This is a stencil, cherry blossom stencil. And then behind here was an Insta background from a scrapbook collection. So that brings us to the end. Again, if you saw a page or a technique that I talked about that you're interested in, go and search on my channel. These are all within at least the last year. You can look for the thumbnails. The pictures of the pages are there. Until next time, go get creative.